Okay, so we're back, and we're gonna do every 17 again, the out of infinity, and hopefully, playing as kid, we're gonna finish use root. Uh, hopefully, hopefully. We're gonna try to gun as much as I can. Um, and now the moment we're all be waiting for a summary of the last episode. Sugumi argues with Sora, telling her to stop lying so that they can escape. We know that there is a facility underneath Lemu, but she won't tell us about it. Um, you whipped out a pen and gave a really big diagram on how the kid doesn't actually travel through time, but he just gained a third eye, and it lets him see one dimension above the one he exists in. Basically, if you have... <sighs> how did it work? It's like, if you have the third perspective then you can see... Uh, two dimensions, and if you see four perspectives, then you can see three dimensions, so on and so forth. And that is an insane concept, but I mean, if you've seen Inception, maybe you can understand. Not Inception. Shit, what is it called? Interstellar. That one kind of covers it. Um, anyway, you realizes that her mom's login for the computer doesn't work because Tanaka Yukie isn't her mother's real name. And then we finally learn that Yu's real name is Yubise Akikana. Yeah, Yubise Akikana, which is gentle, gentle, beautiful, pure, autumn, fragrant, green blossom. Anyway, um, it sounds familiar. We have heard her name before, but it seems a little different than what we remember. That's all I'm going to say. Um, transmission comes in, and we finally get in contact with the outside world, and it happens to be Yu's mom, or her fake mom. Um, but she still says that Yu was born of her body, and we'll find out, I'm sure, later. Um, and then an anonymous man tells us that um, that's also her father, I guess, or, or that her mother loves her. Yeah, that's it. Not confirmed whether or not that's dad. Can't tell. Um, anyway, then, uh, what else happens? Oh, yes, so everybody is, except for the kid and you, and of course Sora, escaped. We're the only ones who didn't escape. Um, our transmission with the outside world was, was bricked, and all we could hear from the other side was somebody saying Blick Winkle. No one knows what the hell that means. There's only two life readings. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. There's only two of them left on Lemu. And then we have on the life readings, it says three. Dun dun dun. Anyway. That's it. Okay. <laughs> let's, uh, let's get back into it. Okay. Take a sip of water. <clears throat> I called Sora back into the room. All survivors remaining inside the park were present. The three of us began to discuss new strategies. The walls of Lemu would only hold two more hours at most. Our last possible escape route had been shut off, filling with flood water, water just a few hours earlier. All hope of communicating with the outside was gone. The current situation had become so desperate that I could no longer expect you or Sora to find an escape route. <sighs> Isn't there anything we can do? Yu lifted the cup of coffee to her lips as she spoke. Her cup contained only black coffee. She had refilled it herself. Watching her drink, I went to take a sip from my own cup, but found it empty. To pour myself more, I walked back to the coffee machine. The machine. There's an interesting contraption with a lower chamber containing boiling water heated up from an alcohol lamp. The water was siphoned up to the central pipe into the upper chamber by the pressure of the steam. Siphon. 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 I got it! Sora, could you show me that cross-sectional diagram again? Okay, so now we see the diagram of uh, Lemu. It's tilted. What's this perpendicular line coming straight down from the floating island? It's an emergency stairwell. This, this area wasn't dry earlier. No, but I was able to drain it yesterday, so... When the flooding started, the watertight doors in the emergency stairwell automatically closed. 
Therefore, the emergency stairs did not allow water in after it had finished draining. It was thanks to the safety doors closing automatically that Kurinari-san, Matsunaga-san, and Komachi-san survived. How far is it from this room to the emergency stairwell? Approximately 80 meters. Really? 80 meters, huh? I just want to confirm this, but if you were to climb those emergency stairs, could you escape to the floating- You could escape to the floating island, right? That is correct. And the safety doors to the emergency stairwell can be opened manually. It is possible. S slow down, kid. What are you saying? What I'm saying is, to escape by going through the emergency stairwell, it may be... There you go again, coming up with another stupid idea. Look right here. Can't you see the blue color there? So? That means the corridor leading to the emergency stairs is totally underwater. Yeah, I know that. Come on, you can't be serious. There's no way you're thinking about swimming there, are you? Ugh, I think that's the first time I've ever heard you make a mistake. I wasn't gonna say that. There's no way I can swim 80 meters underwater. Well, then how do you expect to reach the emergency stairs, then? Oh god, there's more <laughs> lines and descripting text of what's going on. Alright. Uh, cool. You can take a look at that, I guess, whenever you want, but I'm gonna read on. First, let's call the emergency stairwell that connects to the floating islands Staircase A. Then let's call the Sector 4 emergency stairwell here Staircase B. And the emergency corridor connecting to Staircase A will be Corridor C. And? The point is that we need to drain the water out of the corridor, right? Once that's done, we could just skip our way to Staircase A. You say that as if it's the easiest thing in the world, but there's no way we can do it, if you ask me. We can do it. Yeah? How? First of all, there isn't anywhere to drain the flood water in Corridor C. But there is a place. The dry area in Sector 4. <sighs> Are you really that dumb? Water only flows from high to low with the help of gravity. This is the third time that you've made me say that. I know, I know. So why do you keep up with this stupid argument? What, are you thinking about scooping out all that water with a bucket? Not scooping it out, just the opposite. Huh? We're gonna release the flood water from Sector 8. Nobody's saying anything. Kid, can I ask you a simple little question? Sure. Wouldn't doing that put this security office and the entire surrounding area completely underwater? That's right. <sighs> I should have noticed the warning signs. It's okay. They're there, kid. There's nothing to worry about now. Everything's going to be okay. I'll take care of you. Now be a good little boy. You started patting my head. I snapped with anger. Alright then, I'll prove it to you. I dashed out and ran to the warehouse. I found a bucket and uh, sorry, and a clear plastic hose, then drilled a hole into the bucket. Sticking the hose into the hole, I used duct tape to wrap around and seal it. Then I hunted down two more buckets. With goods in hand, I returned to the security office. I like that he knew where all this stuff was, just to show an example, but you know, whatever. Huh? What's that? And you can see a special illustration of the thing that he just made. <laughs> it looks like it's just the 3D models, actually. And it wasn't ever rendered to look like anything more than just the 3D models. It's kind of cute. It's something I threw together to test my idea. I don't get it. What does that thing have to do with the thing we're talking about? Alright, and then we put the, the diagram overlaid over it. <laughs> Listen. First, this bucket up here, the one with the hose stuck in it, it, re it represents Sector 8, where we are, okay? Next, the hose uh, part that's filled with water represents Corridor C, leading to Staircase A. Finally, the bucket set down low represents the fourth block on the third floor, and the empty hose part hanging down to it is Staircase B. Just to let you know, the bent hose part represents the connecting corridor joining to Corridor C with Staircase B, okay? Uh, okay. I got you so far. So then what? 
Before I show you, I want to make sure that of one thing. If we drain the water filling the hose here, then we can move safely to the emergency stairs, right? Yeah, I guess. Alright then, let the draining begin. Huh? Remember what I said earlier? You said... I think you said... We're going to release the flood water from Sector 8, right? So let's release it. Next, I began to pour water down the top bucket with the second bucket, which I filled with water from the corridor. Blub, 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 blub. In no time at all, the top of the bucket was filled. Next, the water from the top bucket flowed down into the hose, pushing the air out from the hose and flowing into the lower bucket. Before long, all the water was drained. Except for a negligible amount left in the hose, all the water from the top bucket drained completely into the lower bucket. And that's how it works. This is how a siphon works. Okay, well let's prove this one more time by looking at the map. The walls of Staircase A, Staircase B, Corridor C, and the area in Sector 4 all intact without cracks or damage. So we can all assume that these areas are protected from outside seawater. Isn't that right, Sora? Yes! Given that those areas don't have any cracks or damage, what will happen if we simultaneously open all the watertight doors in the submerged area in Sector 8 of Zweidersock? An enormous amount of seawater is going to flow into Corridor C? And then, what next? The water accumulated in Corridor C will drain into the dry area in Sector 4. And then what will happen? Probably something like your experiment just now. All the water in Corridor C well, uh, as well as uh, Sector 8 will flow into Sector 4, I guess. Yep, that's the plan. But do you think it'll really work? It's a hell of a lot better than nothing. I'm pretty sure it'll work. <laughs> if we're gonna go pretty sure on like a 12 year old's thesis. And then, it's 3.40 a.m. Are you ready to go? Sure. According to the co color-coded map on the monitors, Widerstock Sector 8 and Corridor C had changed to green. The color green meant that it was a dry area, meaning the drainage had worked perfectly. There was very little time- oh, sorry. There was very little time left before the estimated implosion time. You must hurry. Yeah, we know. We'll be careful. Uh, well, be careful. Huh? What about you, Sora? You're not coming? Listen, kids. Sora can't leave Lemu. We have to go through this again. Have, have you forgotten? I am an RSD-generated image. I am just a computer program. I am not able to join you. So I wanted to say goodbye and wish you the best of luck. Sora... Every encounter must have a parting. And even if I accompanied you as far as the floating island, we would eventually have to say goodbye there. In my case, the parting will come a little earlier than with everyone else. But... Kitsan... <laughs> Think about it like this. When you go to visit a friend's house, when it's time to leave, the friend may see you to the door, but the friend can't accompany you back home, right? This place... Lemu is my home. We'll meet again, won't we? Yes. I am here, but I'm also elsewhere at the same time. Even if the me here disappears, the me there will still go on existing. Don't talk about disappearing. <laughs> this is merely an example, you see. Don't worry, I'm sure that I'll meet you in Tanaka-san again. And it may be sooner than you think. Do you promise? Yes. It's a promise, then. Yes, it's a promise! Looking over Sora's shoulder at the monitor, I could see the number of life readings displayed there. It still says life readings 3. You and I opened the security office doors and exited into the corridor. Giving a wave to the smiling Sora as she saw us off, we climbed the stairs to the emergency corridor. What? <laughs> Sorry. We walked down corridor C, which was no longer flooded. Hey, this is what I was just thinking, but... What about? Surely Sora isn't planning to take responsibility for the accident by dying here. Don't be stupid. Sora doesn't plan to sacrifice herself. 
Sora, you know, is different from us. No way, Sora's not... Um, I don't mean it that way. Um... Anyway, if what you're worried about isn't going to happen to her, how can you be so sure? Maybe that's... Uh, maybe that's the way Leiblick programmed her? <sighs> Here we go again. Listen, this is what I heard from Mayo, but... Before, when she was hacking the source data, Mayo said that she rewrote one line of code. In Sora's programming, there's a priority list of preferential actions. Mayo rewrote, rewrote one of those. And what was that? Above all else, she must value herself most. At last, we arrived the door leading uh, to the door leading to the emergency stairs. All right, I'm gonna open it. Okay. You put her hand on door's handle. Come on, help me turn it. <laughs> All right. Together we grip the handle. It was then that it happened. Suddenly, a low metallic sound resonated behind us. I turned around quickly. Ah! At the end of the corridor stood the girl. Her eyes met mine, and then a name flashed in my mind as clear as a bell. Coco! Huh? Coco? Who's Coco? Turning on her heels, Coco ran off in the other direction. I turned, off, I turned to chase after her, but you grabbed my arm, holding me back. Come on, let's go! There's still someone here! We can't just leave her here! You're just imagining things! Forget about it! The walls began to creak and groan. Here and there, the water began to leak in. Coco! Kids, stop! Tearing myself away from Yu's grasp, I ran after the girl. Yu came dashing after me. Though the voice alternators, uh, through the voice alternators came Sora's warning. The pressure in the partitions has increased beyond their limit! You must return quickly! No way! How long, how long, how much longer will they hold? 10 to 15 minutes. But it could implode at any time. For one instant, I saw the back of the girl. She continued to run down the corridor. With all of my strength, I burst after her. The main building lights flickered and went out and they were replaced with dim emergency lights. With the help of the pale lights I kept with the chase, I bounded down the staircase. I burst into the normal corridor. I ran and ran with all my power. I ran to the end of a narrow corridor in front of a small door. It was there that I caught up to her. Oh, special illustration of Coco next to the Himmel door. She stood with her back to the door. I had caught her. Come on, we're going together. The girl shook her head. Creeping forward, I pressed close to her. But to my surprise, huh? After a moment, as if being absorbed into the door, the girl disappeared. We could see Coco, she's like, sort of merging into the door like a spirit. Out of breath, you closed in on me. <sighs> I finally caught up with you! And what about the girl or whatever? I stood there as if in a trance. Coming back to myself, I tried to open the door to Himmel, but the door wouldn't budge. Sora, open this door! That is impossible! That door is out of my jurisdiction! I pounded on the door. Coco! From the surface of the walls, water began to gush in. Less than five minutes left! They won't hold much longer! Emergency warning! All patrons in the park and all staff are advised to evacuate immediately. Five minutes until implosion. The announcement repeated itself in German and then English. Damn it! Open up this door! I struck it with my fists. Open up! Listen, kid. You've got to snap out of it. Wake up! Ugh! I pounded fiercely against the door with my clenched fist, but no matter how hard I tried, it was in vain. Is she just... Is she just my imagination? If you keep this up, what's going to happen to you? You would die if I didn't do something. Kid? I'm so sorry, you. I strained to speak, squeezing out my words. Okay, let's go! I reached out my hand to you. <sighs> Finally! I gave a, You gave my hand a quick squeeze back. One last time I looked back at the door, and we turned and ran with all my might. We sprinted as hard as our legs would carry us, 
splashing through the water as it gushed like a waterfall. I ran with everything I had. Yu's hand gripped my uh, gripped tightly in mine. Three minutes until implosion. Bounding up the emergency stairs, we reached wider stock. We ran hard down the emergency corridor. Two minutes until implosion. We applied our strength together and pushed open the emergency stairwell door. Closing on the stairs tightly, we headed up the long set of stairs. One minute until implosion. In the distance, the sign read Ersterboden and the first floor. Just 17 meters left. 30 seconds. 20 seconds. 10. 9. 8. 7. We ran towards the final door. The door. The door wouldn't open. Six, five, four, three, two, one. The, ah! the darkness was pierced by a ferocious sound, like the roar of a dragon, or possibly the last agonizing cry before death. May 7th, Sunday. On the floating island, the ocean sun stained the sky land. Sorry. The ocean. I'm sorry. <laughs> the morning sun stained the sky, land, and ocean. It was the first time we had laid eyes on the blue sky and bright sunlight in seven days. It's 5 36 a.m. In the distance, Sarah and Takeshi played together. It appeared as if they were pretending to sword fight with a couple of sticks. Apparently, Takeshi had been routed by Sarah's sword. I gazed dreamily at the two as they played. Sugumi was nowhere to be seen. After the escape, she had disappeared. And as for you? Oh, we got a special illustration of you, and she's in the sunset, and she's looking as fine as ever her 90s face looks like. She sat beside me, gazing at the morning sun. Her eyes misted with tears. It was the first time... It was her first time to see the sun in seven days. Long shadows from her, uh, from her figure and mine cast at a length behind us. Yes, we successfully escaped from that abysmal labyrinth. Abyssal labyrinth is what I said. I kept my promise, don't you think? I turned and asked you. Well, the first one at least. You kept her gaze on the rising sun as she answered. The first one to protect her. And the second? The thing that reminds you about life. Sugar and coffee. Ah, oh, that. The thing that life depends on, didn't you say? Uh-huh. You promised to tell me. Okay. Let me ask you, in that case, what are some things on which life depends? Water, air, food, housing, clothing, money. Okay, what else? Knowledge. Well, I guess there's that, too. Humans can't live forever in innocence, though. To live comfortably, humans also need certain impurities, things that are granted by knowledge. I guess you could compare those things with the milk you put in your coffee. But there's one more thing. Like the sugar in coffee, we need one more thing. What could that be? How does sugar taste? Sweet? It's a wonderful taste, right? So, humans can never entirely live entirely alone. This is so boring. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you still don't get it? People can only know sweetness when they join together. Love. Oh, throw me in the trash. Alright. You then squeezed my right hand and I pulled her close to me. You buried her face into my chest. You're... How does that work? How short is you that a 12-year-old can then bury her into his chest. Odd. Anyway. From Yu's long hair, I could smell her fragrance. The fragrance of sunlight. It's sweet, isn't it? The sun, my sun, which was clear and fresh, flowing with brilliance, tinged with sweetness, the smell of spring enveloped us completely. Okay, well that's it. Wow. back inside. I wonder what we're gonna learn this time. Back to the control room. Come on, 
give me those life readings. Ah, still one. Damn it. Life reading. One. Probably is Coco, right? Okay, well, we. This, this is a bitchin' song, but we're gonna have to get out of this somehow. Wait a minute. What was that name just now? Is that right? Okay. Oh! Oh, we get an extra, a little extra. What's this all about? Two years later. Oh, it's you, and she's got long hair now. Wow, this is great weather. You and I, I were riding in a boat. The infinitely deep blue ocean spread as far as we could see. A clear blue sky unfolded above us. There was a pair of seagulls flying overhead and the sea breeze whipped at us a little strongly and you used your hand to hold her hair on, on in cheek in check sorry can't read she had recently started to grow her hair out it seemed like she was starting to look more like her that and she seemed to have uh, become a bit more easygoing and ladylike so how is college going it's all right i guess wow wait what <laughs> How am I going to college? Yes, I had somehow gotten into college and it was my first year! <laughs> of course I'm going to a different school than you so we never get a chance to meet on campus. Wow, how old am I actually? Why on earth did you decide to major in archaeology? You really want to know? Yeah, that's why I'm asking. You know, it might be better if you didn't ask. Huh? You sh still sure you want to know? Well, then I won't ask. Alright, I won't tell. Huh? Why? Tell me! But you just said you weren't going to ask. That's because you said I probably shouldn't. This is too confusing. You're the one who made this conversation confusing. Anyway, I guess I'll listen to your reasoning. There she went, changing her mind again. You can really be twisted sometimes. Come on! Say I'm pure at heart! What are you talking about? If you were pure, then I'd be... Huh? You would be what? Then you'd be the pure-hearted kid? Hey, stop it. I've changed since then. But after that, I was reluctant to speak. I wondered if I was really different from the person that I was at the time. I probably was. Since then, no inexplicable mysterious things had happened to me. I couldn't predict things anymore. I'd gotten my memory back, or maybe, maybe I was the same. Maybe I was the same as ever. I knew that people learned, got hurt, and lost things, and that they changed as they lived life, but my basic nature hadn't changed. Some things had changed, some things never did. It was still me, but myself in the past was different. If I had to explain it, I might say that it was like me in another world. Maybe that was it. You're right. You're not like you used to be. Well, for one thing, you got so tall. I stood on her. Uh, she stood on her tiptoes and raised her hand over my head. I had grown a head taller over the two previous years. So, are you going to tell me or not? What about the reason you majored in archaeology? All right. It's because I wanted to know myself better. To know yourself. Yeah. To know more about myself at that time. At the time, I thought that it would be best to major in archaeology, the same as you, to understand the weird stuff that was happening to me. You're not going to. Study the third eye. I sure am. I told you, it was probably better that you didn't ask. You haven't changed a bit, I mean. Nope, you haven't changed at all. Neither have you. That reminds me, your clothes are... Huh? The same ones you wore then, right? Yeah, you're right. There was a thin black stain at the hem of her jacket that had remained. 
It was a memorable stain. Our memory. I started to think as I gazed at the ocean. <laughs> Sorry. I thought about the time when I met you. About those unforgettable seven days. But I should talk about the things that happened after that. After that. For some time we just stood there enjoying the sunshine on the floating island. The sun looked extremely bright after a week without it. Its rays were warm. At that moment... Someone patted me on the shoulder. I turned back and there was... It's Sora! Ah! Good morning! S Sora? I promised you that I would see you again soon, didn't I? But why are you here? A am I bothering you? No, not at all. We're just I'm just glad to see you again. Hearing that, Sora smiled gently. I exchanged a handshake with Sora when I met her again. What? A handshake? How do you do that? Isn't she an image? I don't know. I looked up at the sky above. The clear blue sky seemed to spread on forever. Dr. Tanaka is waiting for you. Please come this way. Oh. <laughs> so, now we see s some you and you's mom? Maybe? Special image. Uh, yeah. Oh, you're... The person called Dr. Tanaka who appeared in front of us was the woman I'd seen on the monitor. It was the person who had claimed to be Yu's mother. M mother? Yu, I'm so happy you're alive. Why are you... I promised that I would tell you everything when you got to the floating island, right? It's been a long time. What? I wondered if she was talking to me. It seemed that this was the first time that I'd met her. Or had I met her in the past? What's wrong? Is there something that you would like to ask? Yes, I have tons of things I want to ask. Fine, don't worry. I will tell you everything. All right then. First, I want to... Hold on. Wait just a minute. You? First, there's something I have to ask. Is that all right? Go ahead. You said that you're not my real mother. You also said that I was your child. There's only one thing I want to ask. Are you my real mother? And then the special illustration changed a little bit, so now Dr. Tanaka is a little worried. Dr. Tanaka looked down. She twisted her lips sadly. Which is it? I wondered why you would ask such a thing. She probably already knew the answer. I am you. Huh? I can say this for certain now. I am your mother. You. She stared at you in the eye as she said that. Mother. After a while, we asked Dr. Tanaka question after question. How did we get trapped? Was it an accident or not? Why could I predict things? Why did I lose my memory? What had happened in the past? Did the girl I'd really, uh, that I'd seen really exist? Who was she? What had happened in Yu's past? Did Yu's father and mother really die? If so, then who was she? Dr. Tanaka? What was the meaning of the haiku password? What was Blickwinkle? What was the connection between the TB virus and the accident? And what was the third eye? It was a long, long story. So now we're back in, on the boat. You're thinking about the things that happened then, aren't you? Yeah. Hey, you. Do you know the proverb, water flows and people live? Huh? Water flows from high to low places, but the flow, its path has an infinite number of possibilities. People live just like water. There are infinite ways for life to flow. That's what it means. Hmm. If life has infinite possibilities, there might be another me somewhere who has a different history than the me in the present. Somewhere? Yeah, say, beyond this broad sky, 
Beyond this limited, limitless universe, there should be another universe. Another me in another universe. I was thinking about that other me. Another universe, huh? Hey, if there's another universe like you, say, in that other world, are there another pair of us dating like we are now? <laughs> sure there is. How can you tell? I can tell because I can. You see, if I do this... Oh! Wow, look how tall I am! <laughs> This is a special illustration. <laughs> Doesn't look good, but it's fine. Uh, why is Yu's eye so dark compared to the rest of the black lines in this? Doesn't matter. Anyway, enjoy it. <laughs> um, I drew you close and kissed her. We were surrounded by the spring sun, clouds floating in the sky, and the rippling ocean and the, the song of seagulls. <clears throat> <clears throat> I felt everything about you through her skin. Her warmth, her scent, her touch, her heartbeat, and even the color of her heart. Ew, that's weird. It's a weird thing to say. <laughs> okay. Um, I could see through you completely then. It was exactly the third eye. <laughs> Ultimate wisdom. <laughs> yes, if I did that, then we could transcend time. This story is not over yet because you are in the infinity loop. Okay. Alright, so that was it. That was the end of the story. Alright. Um, so now we're brought back to the start screen. Um, I guess I'll just shut this off and then turn it back on again to do some more. Because uh, I have some more energy left in me and didn't think that the ending was going to happen so quickly. Um, so I'll be right back.